Welcome to this wonderful little um, Let It Snow mitten project. This is a pretty good sized mitten. It's just like a banner size for your door or outside. Um, and we put some little cute LED lights. Um, I'm Patricia Rollinson and we will I will walk you through how to paint this um, pretty simple. It's just probably a beginner intermediate project. I've used a couple of stencils to make things easy, um, not too many. And we've got cute little frolicking penguins and snowmen and they're singing Let It Snow. Okay, I've got a base coat. I've got my surface sealed and I've got a base coat of Ultra Blue Deep plus Snow White. And that's about a one Ultra Blue Deep to four Snow Whites. I'm going to rebase. I'm going to go just a teeny bit lighter than I was. I'm going to put a little bit of water in my brush. Try not to splash all over myself. Okay, I'm going to get it just evenly wet. Come back over here and re-wet. Make these mittens in all kinds of sizes, so you can do this project in any size that fits your, suits your fancy here. Okay, so then we're going to go into Ultra Blue Deep at the edges of the mitten, and we're just going to slip slap bring that color in and because we're dirty um, doing wet into wet um, what's going to happen is we're going to get a kind of a, a framing effect on the mitten. I like framed effects because it doesn't make you look like you're falling out, off of, out of the project. It keeps your eye inside, inside the, the frame. Oops, hi. So every now and again, just wipe off. You can go into your base color if you need to mute things. Your base coat is like a delete button. If you don't like something, you just go into the base and make it go away. So see how that's looking just a little bit rough and jagged? We're just going to go ahead and keep blending. We can pick up my other colors. I'm going to take white and go into the middle. You want to consider your scene. So if you know that you're going to have, you know, a big white snowman in the middle there, maybe you don't want to get so dark. or maybe not so light, sorry. And this is just like a little tap dance. You just dance in and dance back out, sneak in, sneak back out. choppy kind of look that we get. Oops, oh that's a little bit, no. And that's going to be a little bit, neutralize it with my base. And you can go into a squirt bottle and give it a little bit of a mist. These ones that we carry on the website they have a really nice fine mist. And now we can go into Prussian Blue Prussian blue, and we can just kind of soften the very edges. And we'll do a little baby slip slaps. That'll take some of that neon electric blue kind of attitude out of it. And I'm just sneaking, I don't know if you can see here, just sneaking the very edge of my brush into that blue. And then because I'm getting some good control doing it at the angle, I'm going to flip my project over to an angle that's comfortable for what I need to do. And if 
this dries on you, you can go back and you can float this color on. I like to kind of get it all done in one step. But if you can't, you can't. It's going to be a little bit starting to get just a little draggy. So, as long as you keep it awake, you can still work in it. But as soon as it finally goes to sleep, you got to stop. always tell when I'm thinking I'm getting quiet. And I think this area right here could use just a little bit more blending. Okay, so right here, see how it's starting to streak over there on the side? Two things can cause that, um, pulling and drying, or, um, or just too big a color change. I think I'm going to call it Good. Okay, I've got it all dry. I'm going to go ahead and put some drying time extender on the whole surface. And I want it really dry because I just want just enough slip and slop to, to be able to move some paint around, but I don't need it. Um, I don't need to move, move paint. I want to kind of just do some glazing and stuff. So I'll go ahead and get that. When I'm all done putting this on, I'll go ahead and use a paper towel to kind of blot it so that it's not super sloppy. Seems like you can't brush this stuff out. Okay, so I'll just get it all over. I'll pull out that paper towel. And give it just a little, a little wipey. And you can see it wasn't super wet, but you can definitely see that we needed some of it drug out. Okay, now what I want to do is add a little bit of this cobalt teal hue, which is a um, DecoArt Media Acrylic. And they're super sheer, and they don't have a whole lot of... Um, they're not like um, a lot of fillers, so they're super duper like great for glazing and doing things like this. Okay, so I just want to create a colder scene. So I want this kind of don't want it to get too kind of crazy, but I want it crazier than it is. And so see how that's just sheerly going over my other colors, but it's not covering them up. And then I want to go into just a little bit of the Thalo Turquoise. And just bring in a dreamy amount of that. Get my napkin up here. These colors are so amazing. And so notice I'm wiping my brush out. I can also clean my brush out with a little bit of the medium. Don't mix water with this. If you do, you will be very sorry. Once again, I like the angle that I'm being able to work out over here. I'm just pulling ever so, ever so slight amount. Because I'm not doing um, wet and wet, that means that I'm glazing over my light blue area and I'm not mixing. So that's an important, important note to make. This Thalo Turquoise, I think I could just like take a bath in it. It is such a beautiful, beautiful color. And that's deepened that area nicely down there and added a bunch of interest. It's like a deep, dark peacock color. Okay, I'm looking.
looking at it for evenness. What's interesting too about these colors is you don't need a whole lot to, to do the job. Alright, we're going to get some kind of um, dreamy snow effect going. Right now we're going to use a dome brush, some white paint, and dry it off. I call this dry rubbing. Dry it all off on your paper towel. And then we're going to have a word up here, so I think what we'll do is we'll bring it from behind the word. And just kind of make it in a little swishy. And we'll come around over here. Okay, so we'll just continue to beef it up kind of. And I want, to, I want another snowflake kind of over in this. Whoops, not enough. If you start seeing anything strong like that, just... Just say no. You just kind of swirl and break up that sky. Bring it out of the edge. And so I've got my snowman base coated that we can just go right through him. And we can pick up some of these others, some of the other areas when we get it done, but I want the background done because I don't want to go through him once I've got him all painted. strengthen, we'll just go right back on through, and strengthen next to where his features and stuff are going to be, and we can strengthen the stuff after, and we'll have snowflakes popping around. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit closer, and I'm going to take a great big giant angle shader, and I'm going to float with, I'm going to start with the um, slate gray. And what we're going to do is get some choppy some choppy highlights going on here. So I want this to be like and then we'll come over and we'll bring that one over that hill like that. And then we'll come over here and bring a little heap of snow over here. Come on down here. Have a heap of snow there. We're going to have some stuff around that little um, snow angel penguin, but I don't have him on there yet, and I want to do that once he is actually drawn or painted on there. Okay, get some little hills and stuff going. We'll rinse that and we'll go into gray sky. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our brighter highlights be forward and our less bright highlights be back. So I'm going to go ahead with the gray sky over there in the back. But I'm not going to continue with it. I'm not going to continue on with my white um, in the very back. I don't think I like that one there. Okay, this is really actually pretty, um, pretty basic and not very technical, so you can kind of just wing it wherever you want your, your hills and stuff to go. Or your piles of snow. And then we'll go put our brush into the white and we're actually going to have to let that dry just a little bit okay and then we'll come in with our little white and we do it just a little bit thinner than the other and maybe we can just chop up some 
snowy mounds. Yeah, I'm a liar. We'll go back here and get a little bit there. Okay, we'll leave that alone and see what we think. Okay, so we're going to go on to our snowman and we're going to highlight him with dry rubbing and the dome brush using gray sky. And he lies there. So what we'll do is we'll create his roundness. Beat that up. In the meantime, you go on to the other parts and this is a little bit different shape because there's going to be a, a giant scarf there. So this drops down over the other ball. Okay, now we go back up to the top. And we're going to put another spot on our paper towel to dry on. And we repeat. Make sure you're dry. If you're not dry when this happens, or when this when you put this on, it will create a hole. Okay, and if it's cold or sticky, then you're not dry. Let's see, uh, I think I've killed this paper towel. Aha! Okay, now we're dirty brush loading into white increase the, the color. You gotta sneak up on these highlights sometimes. I'm gonna just repeat them a little bit. Try to keep the white within the, the highlight that you just made or that you've already put on. You should start seeing roundness. So this is starting to try to dig a hole, so I'm just going to lay off of that for a minute and hit it with a blow dryer. Okay, one more time. What's happening also is as I'm picking up dirty brush um, paint, I'm ending up with more of the white. And so that's going to become a brighter highlight as a matter of course. And if you get a hole like that and you don't like it, just give it a little stipple, let it dry, and then continue on. It's like putting on like maybe a powder puff of makeup or something. Okay, I'm going to get one more time. Okay, Okay. so we're going to go with graphite and shade, do a lumpy shade here. And a little shade, we'll just go ahead and shade under his scarf area. I need to see where my 
line goes. So I'm going to use this that Threat Ghost Rider and give me a line. This will erase with water and spit and varnish so it won't ever get stuck on there. It's a nice way to trace your lines. Got next to here. blending mop and you always mop from the clean in and then wipe your mop off. It's amazing how that just gives it so much more detail and we'll repeat on the other side. Okay in addition to floating both sides we need to go ahead and float underneath things. So this is um, this ball is over the base so we have to float on it to show that it is casting a shadow. Go ahead and just kind of round that corner out. <clears throat> I'm wiping it off as much as I'm putting it on. <clears throat> and then we also have to float where the snow comes in front. So I got a little bit of, I missed connecting my lines there. Okay, so I'm, now I'm going to take this Italian sash brush that has a stray hair. And it's a very kind of floppy, long, bristled, um, coarse bristler. What I like about it is it's open and it leaves a lovely texture. So what I'm going to do is put, oh, I want it my gray sky. I'm going to stipple it all over and get it all over my brush. But I don't want a lot. I want to stipple it off, kind of. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of set it down. Not enough. And I'm also going to get a cute tip, which is a really pointy, super duper, um, almost like poke you hard um, kind of cute tip. And what we're going to do is we're going to wipe off anything I don't like. So I want just a little bit of texture. on my snowman, but I don't want it all over my background. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll spit on that and I'll go wipe that back. And if you get anything that's stuck, that sticks um, too hard, hang on, let me find my tool. Um, then just take like a micro eraser and spit on it with your tongue and you can erase freshly applied paint that is kind of dry and but it won't lift dried paint so it'll erase like a champ there we go and now I'll repeat on his other sections and then we'll pick up just a little bit of white and do the same thing but only in the middle area line all these um, pine boughs and so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our raffia liner with plantation pine and we want to make sure that we bring it in from the edge and we'll just go ahead and start filling in with these wonderful pine boughs and we'll repeat that on all of these little limbs. All right, we're going to repeat with thinned festive green and it's a real good idea to start from the bottom of your of your um, tree boughs instead of starting at the top. Okay, this is just going to create some volume, create a couple different colors. Brighten it up. 
And when I'm doing this, my hand motion is, is an interesting hand motion. So I reach forward, so I'm not straight up and down. I reach forward a little bit, I set my brush down, and then I do a little kind of a slightly oval movement over and over. All right, I'm going to go with a chisel brush into Plantation Pine. I was playing around with some colors here. And I'm just going to chisel, add little um, bulky looking bunches of greenery here. Make sure you do some in the middle so it doesn't look hollow. It's just going to give some body to the tree. Gives a little bit of texture, gives a place for snow to land. Makes it look a little bit more evergreeny. And we'll go back and we'll highlight as well, but that just gives it a little bit of volume. Okay, now I'm going to go kind of in between on the lighter side of this tree. Oh, but be careful, these things stay wet a little bit longer than you think. And we'll just give a little bit of highlight with uh, using olive green. So maybe just to the tops over here. And let this one side. You want to use pretty heavy paint when you're doing this. And try not to cover up your dark. It just gives us just a little bit more of a dappled brightness in the middle. Okay, I've got my base coats done, um, and you'll refer to the pattern packet for that. So we're going to go into Terra Coral, and we're going to highlight the scarf. Just give it a nice little pop of color. And we'll highlight across. And we'll pick up a little bit of coral shell and repeat in the middle. Okay, now it's not reading very red to me, and I'm going to go ahead and do these steps to the earmuffs down here as well. I think I'm going to do a little trick that I know. shell. So what you'll do for this trick is you'll beef up your highlights just a little higher than you think you should and then we're going to glaze over it with a red. But I want to go ahead and shade first. So we'll go into, I'm going to use a short bright. If you haven't shaded with a short bright brush you are missing the boot because this gives such control. Really really good control. It just controls the amount of paint, it controls all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and shade to either side and where things overlap. Get my contrast going. In painting, contrast is beauty. So, um, and actually in life, contrast is beauty, really. That's why opposites are so wonderful. That contrast in this case is the dark and the light and that just means that you can see the shapes better okay so now we've got that now what I think I want to do is go right into my and I think I want one more step but I'll see if this is gonna work we're gonna go country red I'm just gonna glaze over that and now that should read much more red Okay, 
And then on our um, green step there, we're gonna go, and I need a smaller brush. I'm using a crescent brush. I've got a whole pile of them, but I can't find the size I want. Sometimes they get so dried and so hard that you kind of can't move them, but I think I'll make this one work. So we'll go into the green areas and we'll just do the same kind of thing, except for I'm not sure we'll need to wash over it. I'm going into um, festive green. But that festive green doesn't want to show up very well. Oops, stay out of your red. All I need to do is drag a red hand over my snowman and I'll have pink snow. Okay, that's really just not showing up at all, but we'll go into the olive green. And this will more than likely do the trick. Pop of color. There we go. Now on that red, as I was saying, um, I might want to go in and give him just a little bit of a stripe, or we could give him a little bit of um, texture stuff here. So we could go in, oops, stay still. Give that just a little bit of texture. And that makes it look a little bit knitted. And we could go into our green as well, if I can get that pink out of my brush. And maybe give him just a little bit. And oh, it's a little bit botched. I'll just leave him dry brushed. Okay, so we're going to take our butterscotch and we're going to just kind of dry it off and then we'll do some dry rubbing, dry brushing on our beaks. Just to brighten everybody up here. And just perk it all up. with just a little bit of a dry brush going up the top. He's a happy little snowman. His mouth is just um, based with um, black. Repeat that highlight. And let's get just a little bit of a highlight on his arms. And then we'll switch to our crescent brush for the feet. I'm not sure what I did with all my baby crescent brushes, but I sure need one right now. And we can just line the um, little leg here. Oops. So when you dry brush, it allows some of the base color to show through and it makes everything softer. So make sure that you dry it off just a little bit. Okay, and I think that's really good. Okay, and so now we'll get into another crescent brush and we'll go Terra Coral. And we'll give his little cheeks some blush. Cute, cute, cute. And maybe we'll add a little shine on his cheek. Uh, not so much. Yeah, now that makes him look like pink eyes. And let's give the penguins a little squinty There we go. 
And I think we're going to tone down our bellies on our penguins. So we'll go into, let's go into the slate gray. And let's just shade that down just a little bit. And mop. This is the funnest part of the project. It's when you start putting all the little details on there and it starts kind of coming to life. Okay, so now we've got to play with the snow down here. So let's go ahead and use our grays. Okay, we're going to take our short brights and we're going to shade our snow with some of the graphite. Just like where it's going to be up against his little cute patterns here that he's got going on. When we highlight it, it should improve. And you can shade behind. Whoops, I turned your brush upside right. Behind the snowdrops just a little bit. Our snowdrops need some serious help. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to kind of wash this area with kind of a float. out to like he's disturbing the snow I've never made a painted snow angel before my first time okay so we're going to white and let's go ahead and say that this is going to be Clustered up snow. So it's like a chunky float. Just gonna lay it in there. Let's go ahead and add fluffy other snow coming down here. A little bit of texture, a little bit of eye following. So right now we can make the eye kind of wander through um, the piece. And then let's give our snowman just a little bit brighter highlights with dry brushing. Same white. space just a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And now let's see how that starts walking the, the eye um, upwards. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit more detail. I can't decide if I want to put a cuff up here or not. So let's go into some of the cobalt teal hue. And let's sprinkle in just a little bit more. Let's get some teal in our snow down here. Give it a little bit more action. That looks a little bit more interesting. And we'll come up here in the sky and give it just a little bit more aqua. And give it a little scumble on the tree. Actually, you know what would be nice is a little bit of this accent on our penguin's stuff. And then that mop our earmuffs. That makes me happy. We get just a little bit on our 
I can even highlight these guys just a little bit. And let's try just a little bit and find a brush. This is that time of the day where all of my brushes are in the water. Let's add a little bit of an accent to our snowman, snow buddy. Okay, we're gonna pick up white with our blue in the in the brush. And let's start making the snowman happy. We're making it snow. I'm gonna go in front of his arm but behind his head. Take the white wonder brush, the rake brush, and we'll load just a little bit of white that's thinned on a palette knife. Always test off on your palette paper. And let's walk our way up the snow. cute, isn't it? <clears throat> if you anchor while you're spattering, then you get the controlled spatters. And probably need to have just a little bit of snow on our snow. Okay, now we've got this wonderful little stencil that I have managed to get. Oh, I spilled my spilled my lunch on it. Um, but what we're going to do is have some little music notes in the sky to give that um, let it snow, let it snow singing moment. A random let it snow, let it snow, let it snooze. And let's get the penguin one. Oh, 
Okay, so I've got my letters in white. Now, while the stencil's in place, I'm gonna stipple Dirty Brush into my Cobalt Teal Media Paint. And I'm going to go up the bottoms of the letters. Now I'll go back into white and kind of go through the middle just to kind of blend that. Let's take a peek. Yeah, I think that'll be kind of cute. All right, so now we'll go ahead and use our round brush and the dark. Let's use the phthalo turquoise. Phthalo turquoise, yeah. Let's see how that looks up there next to those letters as drop shading. Let's see what's wet here. So we'll go under and to the left. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Okay, now at this point, before you put on Snow Rider, um, you need to go ahead and varnish. So I always forget to tell people that, but you always want to varnish first. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some snow on our trees, just like it's falling off. Give it like a little bit of texture. liking how that stops right there so let's go ahead and give it let me pretend more and what we want to do is we want to sprinkle a little bit of our glitter and this is this fantastic glitter mix that has like a couple different sizes of glitter and it sparkles really well and I love that I can just get in there and pinch. I think that's so much better than some of the other things I've used. Okay, so now we'll continue. We'll do our snow drips here. festive magic action. And then while, actually I was going to stop, but I want to share, while everything is wet, I'm going to use my um, acrylic bridge so that I can continue working. Can never have enough glitter. I put a puddle of beaten glitter glue out of my palette and I'm going to take my snowflakes 
and pounce them with the bead and glitter glue. And then I'm going to sprinkle them with glitter. I'm knock this whole thing off over on my glitter tray. And I'll do that to all the snowflakes. So I've got this bead and glitter tray that I'll just knock everything off onto this. And then it's got a little funnel right here that I can put it right on into its jar. Okay, so that's where I'm at so far with the glitter and the stuff. And then I've got, so if I put, oops, hi, snowflake up there, maybe one down here, and maybe one, maybe we go this way. kind of thinking my board needs to get uh, sparkly. I think that that may be a true statement. I think what we'll do is, let's, here, let's do this. Okay, so we'll go here, tuck this under, and put our stencil back on there. And I think, hang on just a second. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a wide palette knife scoop out a little bit of white modeling paste so I can scoop it up on the edge of my palette knife that is and I'm gonna hold this puppy and I know I colored my letters but I don't care I think it's gonna look really cool with them raised a little bit so I'll just stackle this through my stencil works really well if you tape it down and you want to wash your um, stencil off right away Okay, and you lift that up and take your glitter and apply it to the letters. And you sing the Let It Snow song. Or I guess it's not the Let It Snow song. It's the Let It Go is what I was thinking of from Frozen. Too much fun. Okay, so now I'm going to knock that off and we'll take a look. Yeah, that looks really cool. I don't know if you can see how glittery it is. It catches those bigger little deals catch the light really, really well. Okay, I'll glue on my other pieces and then tie a little um, tie a little bunch of snowflakes up there and we'll be done. Okay I changed my mind on the snow on the trees because it was just looking way too liney and so I scraped it all off with a palette knife and now I'll just add just little fluffs where I have messed up my trees and then it's just a little bit it was really overwhelming to me and so I didn't care for that. Now that just looks nice and soft like it should. I like all the other stuff though. And I'll put just a little bit on these trees as well. So I wiped it off and then I, well I chiseled it off with that palette knife and then I um, scrubbed it off with my paper towel. Okay, so I think I think we're there. Okay, to finish it off, I went ahead and glued a um, snowflake onto my battery pack for my lights, and I'm going to hang this on my nail, so it will hang just right down the middle. I think that's just perfect. These are actually wire, um, wire little LED lights. They last a very long time, and it looks really cute in this little garland up here, and it just makes everything just jazz up. So um, now I've got my snowflakes up there, I've got my lights and my bling and stuff like that, so I think that just finishes it up.